back to the Berry Islands, you guys. We hope you loved hanging out with our friends Eamon and Beck Welcome last back, week. everyone. Um, but this week it's just us again. I've got to drop my man David off at the beach, then I need you to come spearfishing with me, and then again. This always happens. There's some bad weather coming. Yeah. Riley's in need of a hunting companion. We're going to go before this weather really picks up. Because David's gone, it means that you'll come with me. So it's good when things change up a bit. Yeah, it's really nice having people around, but it's so nice just being here completely by ourselves. There's no one on the beach. Like, we haven't seen another person since we got here. It's astonishing, hey? Yeah. There's not a soul in this massive anchorage. Yeah. Sarah and I just got back to the boat and we're telling Riley about how good the dive was and he's like, can we go spearfishing? There's a big, it looks like a front, but it's probably not yet. Apparently it's not coming till tonight, but the storm clouds are starting to roll in and he's convinced me to go out way past the island and go spearfishing. All right. so small from there. <laughs> Woo! <laughs> Hogfish, again. Um, pretty prized fish here in the Bahamas, so I'm very, very happy about that. It came from another patch of coral over to check out where we were, and I swam down, and they're, they're fairly tame. I held and held uh, until I got the perfect shot, managed to stone it. What does stone it mean for those who aren't spear fishermen? Uh, instant kill. Yeah, they don't even flop around. Yeah, I've day. missed this so much. With two kids now, as you can imagine, it's pretty hard to get any us time these days, let alone stay 100% on top of our nutrition. This is stuck. <laughs> you think I'm still with the children? Can you get that? Anyway, as I was saying, we've been after a good greens powder for years now. Something that I actually want to drink every day. That has all the good stuff, none of the nasties. Our friends actually got us onto Athletic Greens and we've been hooked ever since. So we were so, so glad we got to partner with them for this episode. Thank you guys. Um, it's made in New Zealand, a country we've sailed to where the soil is rich. You can't swing a dead cat without hitting a luscious green mountain. The taste is actually so refreshing. It kind of has a hint of apple with 75 vitamins and minerals. I've actually been preferring to have it over a coffee in the morning. I also love to have it after I've been for a run or in the afternoon if it's been a bit of a hectic day just to bridge that gap in my daily nutrition. So this all-in-one superfood greens powder is super easy to make. It's just one scoop for every eight ounces of water. 
or one travel pack's worth if you're on the run. That's it, mix it with water, super easy. So this stuff here is high in antioxidants, prebiotics, probiotics, and it's a superfood complex using ingredients our body already knows, so it's highly absorbable, which is what you want. It supports your gut health, which we've all learned is super, super important for your overall health. Your digestion, also good for immunity support, and most noticeably to me is probably the energy levels that it gives me. Mrs. Organic Superfood, whose water consumption consists entirely of the morning from Nepalese mountain flowers has given it the all clear, legit. She says it's healthy as, and if it's good enough for her, it's good enough for me. If you guys want to check out Athletic Greens too, you can head to the link in the description below. They're actually going to give you a free gift with your first purchase, that being a one year supply of vitamin D3 and K2, plus five travel packs, all for free with your first purchase. Head over to athleticgreens.com forward slash sailing the vagabond, or click the link in the description below. Thanks so much, guys. It's not often we bring the boat this close to shore, but when the weather's this nice, we can. It really used to freak Elena out. She was stressing because she just thought a random wave was just gonna wash us right up onto the beach. But the more we've done it, the more confident she's become. Our new trimaran will actually be able to go in super shallow. It only draws like 0.7 of a metre, which means you can basically anchor on the beach. It's awesome for the kids and it actually opens up so many opportunities for safer anchorages in calmer waters. It really can't be understated how beneficial that is for a good night's sleep. Only look. Look, shark. Hey. Look, 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 quick, it's in the water. I don't think he believes me. There we go, got it. Whoa, Lenny, look! Did we try to steal our fish, Lenny? So it's a very calm beach here today, so I deemed it safe enough to move the boat in closer. I really love doing that. The only danger is if a wave um, or a series of waves pushes it closer and closer, so you've got to keep an eye on it. You're never really fully relaxed, but yeah, I mean, I'm sitting here. It's just beautiful, isn't it? It's, it's just gorgeous. There's a little shark mucking around in the shallows in front of the boat, and I can walk home if I need to. As idyllic as this moment was, it was soon over. That nasty weather had nearly caught up to us, and we needed to find a more secure spot for the night. We're just finding a nice sandy patch to anchor in, super close to the shore, because there is going to be a lot of wind. So we can afford to be this close to shore. The bugs won't be pestering us. Uh, and that's what we're doing. The lee of the trees and the houses. Yeah, so we were hoping to anchor just over there behind those trees to get a bit of shelter from the uh, from the wind, but there's a whole bunch of coral heads over here and we were just navigating through. Didn't really want to risk it. It's hard to see right now because of the glare of the sun. So we're going to play it safe and anchor in front of these um, houses instead. So I'm looking at where there's no ripples on the water. So it's in the lee of the trees and there's some houses here. No ripples on the ocean surface indicate a protected location without too much exposure to the wind. Spot the right place to anchor, and while it might be 30 knots of wind in reality, you may only feel 18 knots. We love that the huge beach houses and trees of the Bahamas surrounding us make for perfect wind buffers. OK, well, that was quite hectic. We did it. What are we doing? I'm just eating right now. <laughs> Sarah, what are we doing? We're heading to the beach to go cook this beautiful fish that Riley got this morning. Lenny's grumpy because... You I got, wouldn't let him have my new protein bar. bar. Not a Mars bar, it's a protein bar. Mr. Darwin, where's mum? Hey, where's mum? Hey, don't, don't hop on the blanket. lot of fish on the fire before. Jobfish, um, groper, snappers, 
lots of different kinds of fish and we've never cooked a hogfish on the fire. I didn't know that it was actually going to like stretch its mouth. They already have a really big mouth, but clearly once we've cooked it, I guess it's tightened some muscles. I don't want to talk about it, it's disturbing. This hogfish looks possessed. <laughs> like... Yeah, mate, we're eating the fish, it's gonna be amazing. It's awesome, That looks so good. Yeah. Oh my goodness. Watch your feet, please. All right, olive oil. This is courtesy of Back to Basics, I guess we should point out. <laughs> yeah. And some lemon. I mean, it's not, we've, we've done this before, obviously, but we really got a lesson from the masters. All right. Cheers, everyone. <laughs> My morning jog on the beach came to a halt when some more nasty weather came in. It was a really dark, ominous looking cloud. We're gonna beat this thunder. Thunder was amazing, very, very frightening me, Galileo. 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 But instead of locking ourselves inside the vagabond, we actually thought we'd risk getting wet and use this day to stock up the boat again. So we battened down the hatches and headed into shore. And it's pouring down with rain like every 10 minutes. Up to the beach club, it's up there. Yeah. That's section everyone. Some tomatoes. You want to take the GoPro do you? Yeah, I want to take the GoPro. What's that? What's that? That's Mum and Lenny. And Lenny. Say hello. Hello. I want to go in there. Hello. Hello. Look at you, Dad. <laughs> Can I, can I have that, please? No, that's Mama's. were soon replaced with a curious shark, which cut Lenny's swimming lesson short. Whenever a shark comes to the back of the boat, we make sure Lenny hops out. The jumping, splashing and tiny limbs from the perspective of an inquisitive little shark might be a little too appealing. clouds we'd been waiting for set in and we were all heading for cover. 
including some barracuda that made the waters under La Vagabond their safe haven for the night. Say good night, Barracuda. Good night, Barracuda. Great Harbour Key has been great. Tiring of our own lame jokes, we decided to pick up anchor and set sail for a new destination. About to drop. We don't have a main sail up today just because we wanted to take it easy. And we are going through really shallow parts. We wanted to say a huge thanks again to Doyle Sails for partnering with us now and on our new boat. We cannot wait to see our new slick sails on the trimaran. While we're on the subject actually, along with Doyle Sails and Ocean Vault, B&G are also going to be partnering with us on the new tri. And we wanted to share with you Riley's review on our B&G equipment. The B&G autopilot is phenomenal. We went across the entire North Atlantic with it. We had it on the whole time. One really good moment was when it was blowing 50 knots. I was outside, there was ice on the roof, like fro it was just ice and snow everywhere, all over the place. And it was freezing and I was outside on the helm and I put the autopilot on. It, it was doing a better job than I was and regularly does. There's an anchor alarm. You just, you hit a couple of buttons, it's very simple. And uh, if you drift outside of your radius, which you shouldn't if you don't it properly, but it's, it's good to know that an alarm will go off and let you know that you've um, drifted outside of your radius. On, a, on an Atlantic crossing, if there's a squall coming, you can pick it up on the radar, but there is frequently squalls coming. So it's really good to be able to pick where they are and you can see them on the radar. And as one's coming, you can jibe or, or just go a little bit downwind and let it pass you on one side and then, and then come back. It's really, really handy to keep an eye on that because it'll save you having to deal with 40 knots or, or potentially even more. And you can see also the um, intensity, probably by the size of the squall. If it's bigger, it's gonna be more powerful. We sail performance vessels. So the wind instruments are very, very important. We're often sailing by the numbers. So it's important to have your wind sensors good and dialed in. And also, if you put the autopilot on wind vane mode, you will sail, you'll keep the wind at a certain degree to, the, to your current tra trajectory. So you can relax a little bit knowing that you don't have to be worrying about the wind changing direction. Join us next week as we arrive at the Blue Hole. Sarah really makes us laugh as she takes the leap.